Well, 10 days after its initial release on January 28th, I've been finally able to finish the new Korean zombie drama, All of Us Are Dead. This show has been sitting in Netflix's number one in the top 10 pretty much all week. I think just hit today at number two. So before we go into it, please make sure you like this video if you guys have been enjoying it. Please make sure subscribe if you're new. But here are my quick thoughts on All of Us Are Dead. So All of Us Are Dead takes place in a high school that has become ground zero for a new virus outbreak. And like I said, this is a zombie series, and I'm a huge fan of zombies. I mean, I used to love The Walking Dead back when it was good. I stopped watching it. Uh, I've pretty much seen every single big zombie film. Uh, you know, there are uh, obviously a couple that I haven't seen yet. And the thing that I found with zombie movies is that you either do it right or you don't. The people behind the project either know what they're doing and they create a great zombie film, or it's on the other side of the spectrum and it's just not a good film. And my personal favorite zombie movie is actually Train to Busan, which is another Korean zombie film. And uh, this show knows that it takes inspiration from that movie. I mean, they even referenced the movie, I think, in episode two. And uh, what this show does is that it takes a lot of the great parts about that movie uh, while also adding some new twists as well. They have the fast-moving zombies, which is my preferred, you know, form of zombies. You know, some people love the slow-walking ones. I think nowadays, you know, everything is so fast, so the zombies need to be fast. So have that adrenaline and excitement. Slow-moving zombies just aren't the thing nowadays. They also have a great use of blood work, and most importantly, they have great characters. They have a group of characters that are all different. They all add something new to the story, and you can root for some, and then they also have some that you hate. And I think that's the most important part of zombie movies, is that there are characters that you can love and root for, but then there are also characters that you just want to see die. You know, and Train Busan has, does such a great job with that. And I like that they see, you know, they bring that same sort of vibe into the show. And so the series is about 12 episodes and they're all about an hour long each. And now that is a pretty big commitment nowadays. I mean, nowadays you see a lot of shows that are 10 episodes max, you know, sometimes eight episodes. To see a 12 episode series that are each an hour long, it could be pretty intimidating. And I think it sort of was in a way. I mean, uh, I think some scenes were sort of drawn out. I kind of wish the runtime was cut down a bit. If this was maybe a 10 episode series, I think it could have been perfect. But the show was trying to say a lot, was trying to do a lot. So I guess they needed to have those 12 episodes. But I hope for season two, if they are going to make it, I hope it's more of a 10 episode and not a 12 episode one. That is just one of my main big nuances of the show. But overall, I will say that what this show does with its scripts, they do a zombie story pretty fluently. It goes the way you want it to go while also adding some new twists. You know, in the first episode, they show you what life is like before the outbreak, right? Which is sort of like what is needed for a zombie movie or a series to show the peacetime before chaos ensues. So I love that the first episode focuses on that. Let us know the personality of these characters. And that setup is sort of crucial, you know, for the story that you're trying to tell. After that first episode, the show gets into the core of the zombie story. And I love how this show focuses on a theme in the beginning that real life problems don't really matter once something crazy like this happens. You know, we see the kids dealing with school and bullies and, you know, one girl wants to like kill herself over bullying and all this stuff. And those are real problems, you know, in this world that we live in right now, those are serious things and all that stuff matters. But, you know, once zombies just start eating everyone, you know, school doesn't matter, uh, you know, having friends, you know, stuff that we worry about every single day, all that stuff becomes non-real it disappears in this new world and so those first couple episodes um i did feel like it did get a little repetitive at times uh it mostly just focuses in the high school and these kids and it's sort of just like they get stuck in a room right and the zombies are outside and it's like okay we need to get out of the room so then they get out of the room and now it's like okay now we're stuck in this room and it sort of happens a lot obviously there's stuff that's sprinkled in throughout uh but i think like i said the runtime was cut down a little bit shorter those scenes may not have felt as repetitive or as drawn out. Uh, and, you know, there's cons and pros with having the drawn out scenes, right? Even though it may feel a little bit repetitive for me, um, it gives us more time with these characters. So when a character does have to go, I mean, that's not really a spoiler. You know that people are going to die in a zombie show. When a character does have to go, it feels more emotional and sadder because we spent more time with them. You know, we have more of a connection with them because of that longer runtime. So there's pros and cons to having that as well. For a zombie show like this as well, you also need some good high tension moments. And boy, does this show deliver on that. There are so many moments where you're just like on the edge of your seat, uh, either rooting for a character to die or to live or something like that. And uh, there's just a lot of moments like that. Just a lot of tension. Uh, it's filled with a lot of the same zombie tropes that we've come to expect. Uh, you know, someone gets bit. It's like, what do we do now? This person's bit. Or we think someone's bit, but they're not bit. So everyone's like, you know, what do we do? Those aren't new things. Like The Walking Dead had a lot of that. Uh, there are plenty of movies that use those same sort of tropes 
And with zombie movies, you do see a lot of the same things, you know, a lot of the same, you know, mini plots that happen, like the things I just described. But they're also another thing that's sort of crucial for a zombie series. You know, if you're going to have 12 episodes, you might as well throw in those sort of zombie tropes that we love. Uh, and I don't really get too tired about, you know, the biting, seeing someone that's bit, maybe they're not bit. It's still sort of fun, especially with new characters. Another perk of this show is that there are a lot of characters. There is not only this high school group, there's a bunch of different groups that we follow. Uh, we'll also figure out the origin of this virus. There's sort of like this mad scientist um, that sort of, you know, created this whole virus. And to see his story about his son and his wife uh, was compelling. It was emotional. Uh, he was a really good character. There's also that suicidal girl that I talked about earlier and what she wants to do, you know, during this whole outbreak uh, is interesting as well. And she's a very sort of, you know, a character with a lot of depth to her. And to see all these different characters and they all have sort of this different motives in this new world, uh, it adds a lot to the show. It adds some more excitement. Uh, you never know like what's going to happen sort of thing. And I appreciated that. But that being said, there also there were also some characters that I didn't really care for as well. They bring in like this YouTuber in the beginning and they sort of focus on him a little bit too much. Uh, there's this detective who was a good character. I didn't hate him, but I kind of wanted to get to that core group a lot more whenever we had scenes with him. There's also another group of high schoolers that were like bow and arrow experts and I didn't really care for them either. They were good characters, especially towards the end because we spent so much time with them. You know, I got to like them a little bit more. Uh, but in the beginning when they were first introduced and they were shown a lot, I was sort of like, and I really let, enjoy these characters as much as that core group of high schoolers. The show also focuses on how the government would react to this outbreak, uh, drawing parallels to the coronavirus. And it's cool because like they acknowledge the COVID virus in this and sort of like, uh, they talk about some things that happened there and it just makes the show feel a bit more like realistic and real and new by having, you know, them acknowledging COVID because it does have similarities, you know, a virus outbreak, how it ever react, sort of the same sort of things happen, right? But I like seeing that, you know, how the media would react, how the government would react, what would they do? How would the rest of the world react? You know, because it's sort of like this small outbreak that will eventually, you know, maybe uh, scale out. But it was just interesting to see that. And then I would say around episode five, uh, the whole show just sort of flips on its head. It has like this big twist I wasn't expecting. It sort of becomes something a lot more creative than just your typical zombie series. It adds a lot of new things that I've never seen before in a zombie film or a show. Uh, and I think that was very unique of them to do and it, and it worked well. It was probably a big gamble to include that, but I think it, it worked well for the show. And then some other things I enjoyed is that, you know, this is a very action heavy show. It's sort of just nonstop action-packed, uh, you know, goodness, which I love for a zombie movie. Uh, but some of my favorite moments from zombie films are like those quiet moments where they reflect on what has happened, maybe have some good conversations. And the show saves a lot of time for those moments, which I appreciated. We can have the action-packed stuff and we can run away from the zombies and kill the zombies and, you know, it's blood everywhere and it's gory and it's fun. Uh, but then we can also get serious at times and, you know, sit around and talk and reflect about either deaths or what happened or, you know, what's going to happen after. And I just love those conversations as well. Like I said, it just makes it feel a lot more real. And then by the end, the series packs in a lot of emotion, whether it's with deaths or it's with just these like high school romantic moments uh, that just work out well. Like I said, this is another pro of the runtime. Uh, we have to spend a lot of time with these characters, you know? So when they finally confess a love or they save someone, it uh, means a lot to the audience as well. You know, we spend so much time with these characters. Uh, we want to see them succeed. And uh, I just enjoyed the romantic aspects of the show as well. It sort of worked me when it easily couldn't have. Uh, so my rating overall for this show is a solid four out of five. My only problems with it is maybe too much of a long runtime. I think 12 episodes was a little bit too much. I would have liked maybe 10. Uh, I would have made those sort of repetitive scenes I talked about not feel as much drawn out. But honestly, it's pretty much close to a perfect zombie show in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, Train to Busan, that movie for me is like a 4.7 out of 5. I mean, that, like I said, it's my favorite zombie movie. There's a lot more emotions in that movie for me than it was for this show. But this show, I can't really hate in it too much. I had so much fun with it. Uh, the characters were great. There were so many twists and turns and excitement. And as a zombie fan, I enjoyed it a lot. And I wouldn't be surprised if this maybe cracks my top 10 at the end of the year. Maybe we'll see. We still have a long year ahead of us. But let me know down below what you guys think of All of Us Are Dead if you've seen already. If you haven't, let me know if you plan on checking it out. If you guys enjoyed this review, please make sure to like it. Please make sure to subscribe if you're new. But I will see you all in the next video. Have a great rest of the day.